Happy New Year, everyone. You know, it's December 31st right now, and while I'm waiting for fireworks to go like pow, pow, and everything, I didn't want to waste the last couple hours of 2020. So I went on YouTube, the best place to find inspiration, and I came across this video, which I think sums up 2020 really well. So we often take for granted just how truly remarkable something as small as this can be. That's what she said. <laughs> I gotta start that over. Wait, that had absolutely nothing to do with anything. If you go on to watch Matt Diavella's video, he compares his life from when he switched from using the iPhone to the flip phone. And when he describes this, he says, you often take for granted. And I feel like that's a great description for what the year 2020 has been for all of us. It has shown us exactly how much we really take for granted. What was supposed to be a year filled with lots of excitement, fun, a start to a new decade has been uprooted and replaced with endless Zoom calls, no haircuts and then lots of long hair, and lots and lots of social isolation. Like no doubt this year has been absolutely crazy uh, for all of us, but for me, it has been very, very special. And I feel like that just comes with the mentality uh, that I have been able to take a positive outlook on a year that has a lot of negative connotations. Getting into the Laid Law Scholarship, being able to do a fully funded research project uh, as I act as a student PI, uh, starting my own educational nonprofit that has spanned borders and is able to reach thousands, tens of thousands of students across the world um, being able to start the next generation of biotech community, the bio dojo, uh, having my own newsletter, starting YouTube, starting to write and publish articles and everything, being featured on a podcast, having invites to panels and interviews uh, for high school students. This has just been an absolutely crazy year for me and I cannot say how much like God really just put laid out a foundation and a path that I could never have seen before. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna be talking about all that in this video today, but for those of you who may not be interested in hearing all the details and everything, Happy New Year to all of you guys. Uh, wishing you the best, best of luck, all the best health and everything, and everything you'd want in life in the year 2021. Um, we'll see you all next year. But for those of you who are interested, let's get to the video. All right, so the Late Law Scholarship. So for those of you who don't know, the Late Law Scholarship is something offered to the University of Toronto, uh, and other universities around the world. And it takes basically 25 undergraduate students um, from all three campuses at the University of Toronto. And these 25 students go on to then pursue an individual student research project where they act as a student PI, as well as a lot of leadership expeditions and networking sessions and talks uh, by global executives from incredible uh, organizations and corporations. And that's something that I've been so fortunate to be a part of. I know right now the application cycle is going on for the 2021 cohort of Laid Law Scholars. So if you're applying, I know a lot of my viewers have messaged me about applying to the Laid Law Scholarship. So if you're applying, uh, best of luck. If you have any questions, I'm always here. Uh, but I just really want to talk about that um, and how that really changed my life in terms of how much opportunity, how much exposure I ended up getting because of this program. So this has really just dramatically, dramatically made an impact in my life uh, throughout 2020. I remember when I first got uh, accepted back in February, that was probably one of the happiest days of my life because as an underdog, I didn't have any research experience at the time. I didn't have any uh, uh, limited leadership experience. And since then, um, because of Blade Law, I've, had, I've gotten so much opportunity to do so many things. So I'm extremely grateful for, to the Blade Law Foundation, uh, which is based in the UK, by the way. So notably, some things that we did, um, the first thing I can think of is a virtual internship. Uh, when COVID shut down, we had the opportunity to contribute and help out in the educational field and basically helping out all these students and parents and teachers who have been affected by the COVID pandemic and the switch to online learning. So a lot of us had the opportunity to engage with our community. Uh, I was able to speak to a lot of high school students and high school teachers specifically. And that fostered the creation of something that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on, but it's ISN. You guys have heard it on the channel, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but Layla also, through that program, I was able to network with so many so many scholars from around the world. I've talked to a lot of people from Columbia University, Tufts University, University of Leeds in the UK, uh, Durham University, uh, some people from Hong Kong University, the University of Hong Kong, sorry, Hong Kong University, HKU. Um, but there's just so many people and so many things that I've experienced because of this program. 
And not only that, um, I had actually had the opportunity to attend a lot of these talks. Some of, the, some of these talks, um, I was able to meet um, a lot of high-ranking executives from various companies, from American Express, from Visa, um, a lot of startups coming from MIT and Harvard, um, as well as uh, like I think someone from who was it Aviva. Aviva, I was able to talk to the global chairman of Aviva, which was really really crazy. And just about a month ago, I was actually at Cornell, virtually at Cornell University in the U.S., giving them a talk about my experience on the Laidlaw Scholarship Foundation. And so I think it's really special to me. And if, if anyone from Laidlaw is watching, I know a couple of the I think a couple of the execs at Laidlaw are watching this. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it and everything. And this has made the biggest impact I feel like on my 2020 year. So not directly related to Laidlaw, but uh, its contributions definitely helped uh, me get this program off the ground. And this program is ISN. So as you know, in the beginning of the year, uh, not the year, beginning, yeah, beginning of the year, uh, COVID-19 came to Canada in around March, February, March, I believe. Um, and that really disrupted everything. A lot of grade 12 students, unfortunately, did not get to have prom grad, uh, or graduation. And that's really unfortunate because those were some of my best memories as a high school student were made in those two events. Um, and I know that even applying to university, that was really difficult for them and choosing which ones, those middle of application season and acceptance season. So I really want to do something to help these people out. And so the University of Toronto actually provided um, a student engagement award, which recognized up to 65 projects uh, with $3,000 to carry out a project of our choice. And so me and a couple of my uh, really good friends applied to this, uh, this scholarship and we somehow uh, were able to get get that funding um, to start to launch ISN. So with that $3,000, we were able to launch ISN, not only within Canada, but also in the UK. Um, we also did something in the US for a little bit. Um, but basically what this program is, and those of you all familiar, it's basically a centralized platform for every single student needs. So we have a lot of resources, support. I know a lot of grade 12 students have been checking the resource out, um, but notably throughout the summer, we were able to host a 170 plus internship program in the middle of a pandemic and this attracted more than uh, individuals from more than six countries across the world we also that ended up hosting a hackathon which had four, 460 um 460 participants from over 26 countries and we co-hosted that with ignition hacks and in october we were able to run a virtual university fair the first ever of its kind which has been absolutely incredible it ran for two days and we basically we had 325 live attendees or uh, more than 325 live attendees and from from these experiences what I can notably take away I keep saying notably but what can I can really take away from all these experiences is the fact that student-led change is indeed very possible and I actually wrote an article about how student-led change is really really powerful um, and I know I know a lot of you out there who are watching my channel I'm really lucky to have viewers that are really invested into uh, getting better also contributing towards like, their greater community and so I urge to you out there if you're watching, if you have an idea and you see a problem out there, don't be afraid to go ahead, go ahead and attack it because there's a lot of great things that you can do even as a student and you have a, you have a very powerful toolbox that a lot of people, um, you know, there, a lot of people can benefit from what you have to offer. All right, so that was a little bit of my creative side, my entrepreneurship side, um, entrepreneurial side, sorry, that came out in 2020. But I think uh, just to elaborate more on the creative side, I think this year was a really big step for me in that, in that space. I know this year at the start of my YouTube channel, uh, which was really crazy. Uh, I never thought ever that I would be able to do this. And I think this is probably what, my 18th video, 19th video. Uh, and 19 videos later, here I am um, with 700, uh, 740 subscribers. Absolutely crazy. I could not have imagined this year to go any other way. Um, or not sorry, any the, the way it has. And I feel like this is all credited to the the change in plans that, that this pandemic has brought on, you know. And I think what's really interesting is that being flexible, being able to adapt, is one of the skills that I've been able to um, take from this year, take from the difficult circumstances of this year, and put it into my life and put it added to my toolbox. And that's something I feel like I've really improved on this year and being able to maximize on the opportunity um, and be able to adapt to various situations. So YouTube for me, um, I know that that when I first started, I remember I had to put out at least 10 hours of work before putting out a video, which was a lot and it was not sustainable for me as a, like a, as a pre-med student, as an undergrad researcher now. 
um, as someone who has so many other things going on than just YouTube and school. And so my whole thing now is to really just put out the best content, uh, something that helps you guys because my channel is all about helping helping you, maybe not entertaining yet because you know we're stuck at home, it's hard to, hard to do things now. Um, but basically the content hopefully is helping all of you and I've, what really warms my heart is getting um, invites to speak. I've had so many invites to speak over the summer at, at different conferences and workshops. Getting uh, invites to chat, I know a lot of students have been having like had a really good things to say about how, about how my content has helped them throughout their application journey to U of T specifically, but also a lot of other universities. And also a lot of you now are in undergrad and you're trying to get into research. And so there's a lot of great discussions, it's a great community that um, this channel has brought along and I'm very, very fortunate to have every one of you on board with that. Um, and I really just have to say thank you, like a huge trying to thank you because YouTube, although it has taken a backseat the past, the past quarter and a bit, uh, but it really did change my life as well. Uh, being able to do something that I thought was very uncomfortable, um, like public speaking in front of a camera like this is totally weird. Uh, it still is to me, but before I could never even imagine myself doing that. But here I am today, um, doing this type of stuff. It's absolutely crazy. So thank you very much to all of you who are who have been supporting me through that. Um, it really means a lot. And as you guys know, um, I've just started writing a newsletter, the One Percent. You can check out the details if you're interested. Um, in my in my last video, I talked about it a little bit, but it's the One Percent link in the description below. Uh, if you're interested, definitely subscribe. We almost have we have like around 65 people subscribing in the pat in like a past month in a bit, like two months, which is crazy. And I, I did not, not expect anyone to be subscribing to, to my weekly newsletter and everything, but there's a lot of people, I think are, we have someone from India who's watching it, which is crazy. Uh, I mean, reading, which is crazy. Um, and, and also just in terms of writing as well, I've been getting into writing articles and seeing the importance of writing. Um, something that I'm like to, I like to preach to a lot of people now is work on your writing and not writing like very technically or whatever, but writing with per with some personal style to it, and I, that's something that I've gotten into over the summer and throughout 2020. And a lot of people have been saying really good things about that, and seeing how I guess my investment in, in turning and learning how to write well and communicate well has turned out into a lot of benefit, which is very surprising. So I'm gonna be keeping that up, and hopefully I have a little bit of tips that I would like to share in the new year. Um, but a lot of the creative side has really been sparked by my engagement with YouTube. So again, thank you guys, thank you guys. All right, so in terms of the academics, school research, um, marks and all that stuff, it's been a very, very crazy year for me. I know that with school, it's been pretty normal. You know, I'm just trying to do, put in the work to get decent grades or as best as I can. Uh, but the really interesting things that happened in 2020 was um, indeed, the extracurricular academic involvement. So my work with research projects, um, writing reviews and everything, that's been absolutely crazy. And I think I have to credit that all to meeting the right people at the right time. Um, a lot of people in the bio dojo, which I talked about in my last video, have been very instrumental in, I guess, encouraging me and inspiring me to go into research. Uh, notably, Michael Trin and Subeda Rahman, they're, they've been game changers for me. Uh, they're, a lot of their, my inspirations and everything in terms of research, uh, and just, they're just great people in general. So I'm really thankful for them. I know sometimes I think they watch my videos, um, but they've been game changers for me on that front. And we actually worked together on creating a project, a proposal, a research proposal for antimicrobial resistance that I mentioned in my last video. Uh, but we also are building the bio dojo together. Uh, and so that's really special in this cultivating that environment where we're able to meet PIs, meet, uh, meet a lot of uh, grad students and just talk about research and talk about uh, academia and being an undergrad research student and trying to navigate that space. It's really special to find people that are as motivated as you and I feel like these are the most impressive people in undergrad right now. I don't think there's anyone, I, I know I'm getting to know a lot of people and I don't, I don't think anyone can talk to people at the Bao Dojo which is absolutely crazy um, but in terms of research side uh, I have gotten a lot I have started another project an HIV project which is pretty cool um, hoping to share more of that as my my journey progresses um, that's gonna be happening throughout the next semester but in terms of like the project for Laidlaw that's gonna be happening in the summer 
and ho I'm hoping to really take you guys along that journey and help hopefully give you some more research tips, advice, because I know that's a big part, that's a big, um, I guess, that's something that a lot of people on my, my channel are looking to, to get into, so that's really cool. Hopefully I'll have a lot of good answers for you guys, but stay tuned for upcoming videos on that. Throughout 2020, a lot of my plans have been uprooted. There's a lot of things that I wanted to end up doing, like doing research for the first time, um, you know, maybe going on a trip with my family, and just enjoying a semester worth of in-class like in in-class lectures. I mean, but all that had to be put to a stop because of this the COVID-19 pandemic going on. And I feel like without being able to adjust and see the world and see the circumstances in a positive light, it's really hard to make the most out of every opportunity. And I feel like when I look back on the year 2020 and I see everything that has happened, I realize that everything has happened for the, uh, the right things have happened at the right time um, with the right people at the right place. And I feel like that's something that uh, is really special to me. Uh, me being religious and everything, I just know that there is a God who is in control of everything um, and that he sees something that is better and bigger than every anything that we all could see as human beings. And so um, looking at back at this year, I really am confident and very happy with how I chose to spend my time. Um, it's been crazy and I feel like going forward to 2021, it's, it's a big step in the right direction for me. Um, I know that I have I have grown a lot as a person throughout this year, as a student, as someone who has experience now in in running a organization, uh, running a community, and also creating content uh, through like newsletters, um, blogs, and also and, tw and Twitter even, and of course YouTube. Uh, it's just been crazy, and, and if if someone told me that 2020 would look like this for me, I would have had a stroke because this would not have even been possible. It's, it's not in, in the realm of comprehension. And so after everything that I've just been talking about, um, I am very surprised if some of you are still interested and still watching all the way to the end. If you are though, drop a, a lightning emoji uh, in the comments just so I know who made it all the way to the end. Um, but thank you guys all for watching. Uh, my whole thing for you for 2021 is just make the most out of every opportunity um there's a saying seize the moment seize the day uh that's something that i've learned to do throughout 2020 um and now going to 2021 my whole big mantra is stop pause and appreciate uh because i feel like life when you have so much going on your life goes by so fast but now the challenge for me is to take a step back and make sure i really take everything in and I soak in the moments and really appreciate what has been laid out for me and so with that mindset, uh, I'm really excited to be going into 2021. Hoping for, hoping all the best for all of you guys. Um, I know it's a great, uh, a great, very unusual year has just passed uh, of 2020, but I'm looking forward to all the challenges and overcoming the challenges with all of you uh, in 2021. Uh, so that being said, thank you very much for, you know, for watching my videos, for supporting me. I really appreciate it all. And I look forward to seeing you guys all in the new year. Happy New Year, everyone.